Hey guys, Infidel 1258 here. Today we're going to talk about the new Hall of Legends promo cards. These cards are exciting, but I want to do a deep dive on each of them. I am going to talk about their abilities, their lore, their synergies, the connectivity across their the abilities that they each offer and with other monsters that they might be able to partner with. This is a 33 minute video where I'm going to go deep on these two and give an analysis of which ones are must have, if any. So if that sounds interesting, stick around and stay tuned. And otherwise, thank you so much for your time. Have an amazing day. God bless. Okay, so Hall of Legends, brand new monsters. I said this guy was going to be a double striker because I said he'd have range and he'd have uh, melee. And I said she'd be a magic monster. I said he'd be higher in mana with a double strike or something like that. I said he'd be fire. I said she'd be water. Um, let's see if, how right I was. Okay, so she is water and earth. That was one of the things I thought about. I ultimately pulled away from it and I said water was the only thing I really felt confident about. Um, but you can see the elf ears and elves are often like associated with trees. I think I might have even said that um, Okay, so like from a from a element perspective, I, I, I think that makes sense She's got like a tree branch too. Hey as a staff We didn't you can kind of see it, but you can't I didn't comment on that before so they have multiple art here, too There's this art and there's that art. Oh, okay. It's just reversed same art just just flipped Rune Arcanist, seven mana, two damage output. That's not a very high damage output for, for seven mana. Three speed, that's not very fast. Two armor, okay, eight hit points. You're pretty resilient-ish with the scavenge. Eight hit points with the scavenge can get pretty big. But what's your deal? I don't, I don't get it yet. Weaken is a heavily underused ability. Like, I mean, it's, I don't see it almost at all anymore. It's more of a death splinter ability usually. Um, I like Weaken. You know, you could probably, there used to be some really fun plays with low mana where you could get multiple Weakens and maybe one redemption or two redemptions and then just take out your opponent that way. Weaken is not necessarily the biggest deal. Um... So far, I'm underwhelmed. I know there's a new ability here. I'm gonna obviously focus on that too, but I'm underwhelmed in a, like this 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 ability has to be pretty crazy. First of all, I wanna read the, her little lore. Erin Doril Morth Morlana, a sorceress from the kingdom of Thanaloria, house of, okay, is renowned for her mastery of runic magic and command of the elements of earth and water. When Rage's dragons threaten her homeland, she joined its defense. She accompanies the battle, the battle mage in the journey in the Mount Red Worm, Red Wim. And within Rage's, Rage's lair, she uses her magic to protect her allies from ancient worm's magic, saving the battle, battle mage's life. Okay. So what's your deal? Oh, phase ward. Yeah. I heard about this. Okay. So that is a really s impactful ability. The rest of this, I'm like, e okay. Like I'm not, I'm not interested. That radically changes everything. Now, scavenge with eight hit points is a big deal. But even if you're 20 hit points by the end of the match, which you maybe you, you will be if you're placed right and all that jazz, you know, you're only doing two damage. Now I know it's got earth, so you could bring out, um, obsidian and give her three who cares three damage is not much and so what's the deal here right now it makes so much more sense with phase ward you're going to probably put her in that second spot and you're going to put thereby dropping phase on your primary tank and she's going to be a pretty resilient second spot tank maybe a snipe tank right and the scavenge is definitely going to help. And the cripple certainly helps, right? This is a decent kit. Like the weekend, the scavenge, the cripple, it's a decent kit. The issue to me is like, I just don't see for seven mana, two damage is being justifiable. Three speed is too slow. Um, this is more of a meat shield than a damage doer. But then the phase ward makes it a meat shield and it will be a substantial meat shield. It makes it a meat shield with a very significant contribution of defense. And so... I don't know if that, I, I want to look at the breakdown of its abilities and see, they don't show us that, eh? 
I want to see where we get the mana phase ward. I want to see where we get scavenge. I want to see, you know, all of it. Um, it's a rare card, so you need 115 of them. 115 times 3,000 DC, 3,000 credits or 3,000 DC. You know, you're talking 250 or 280 or something like that. Yeah, two, maybe it's 250. Um, I'm feeling like a no on that one. Even with the phase ward. Now, phase ward's awesome. Phase ward would... There's lots of cards where if you could... if you, They have crazy speed. They have crazy... They have blind or they have flight or they have dodge intrinsically. And you can drop a phase on that. So, like, even just quickly to go to earth and water. Let's go into buy. Earth, water. Let's look neutral. Dragon 2, actually. Now let's look at some melee monsters. Now you wouldn't have to focus on a melee, but let's look at melee monsters. Let's go max. Let's just look at rebellion because look at this. Does it look crazy? No. Okay, we, we can look at the, all these cards. Just reg foil. Not interested. Okay, how about this? Flight, dodge, phase. Three mana. Flight, dodge, phase. Five speed. Okay, so this is a chaos card. Okay, you could play this combo for a while at least, right? At least in, for another few months. Anything with flight is gonna have an immediate interest in that because the flight's at 25%. Now I know snare, people use Pelicor Bandit as a tank sometimes in really low mana matches. Six speed, flight, and phase. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. How about Venari Knifer? with the backfire that has intrinsic and the six speed, basic six speed. Yeah, Melicor Mercenary for sure. Harvester even, because it gets the enrage and, and if you can bring a couple speeds, you could get it up to eight with phase like pretty quick after it takes any damage. How about, how, how uh, you know, you could bring out Flying Squid. It's got backfire, it's got blind. You could put it in the primary tank position and throw a phase on that puppy and maybe that's enough. I don't I don't think so, but maybe. Mmm, Terracious Grunt. Big hit points. Dodge. Now the speed's not enough, no. No, I don't like that one. How about Demon Shark? We love that tank. It's an amazing tank. It's a carry car. It's so powerful. Most people have it. The Enrage drives the speed to a crazy new place. And drop a phase, you're probably going to dodge a few shots. That's And magic is one of its weaknesses, right? One of its biggest limitations is your opponent does magic. Well, you just improved meaningfully your resistance to that approach or to your opponent's approach archimus would would love to see a phase on himself right because he goes in rage too i don't think any of these are the best choice uh, i think maybe i might have showed the best choice up above cocatrice kind of vibes or the that one that i showed right away with the that has the same kit with the five speed three mana Yeah. I mean, of course, phase could work on anything. And you don't have to put it on the main tank. And right now we're only looking at melee. So, you know, there's magic monsters that could enjoy that phase. But I, I'm i not seeing that as, you know, Commander Slade could enjoy it, couldn't he? Because he's got the dodge. He's got a decent speed. I don't think that is particularly impressive. It is theoretically very valuable. But... It's very valuable, but it depends on the other t cards in the system. So the ability to drop a phase and meaningfully move the needle depends on the other cards that are available. And they will change. Like Conclave Arcana will radically, might introduce an eight speed monster that doesn't have phase. And then you're like, yeah, I want on this team. And then you're like, yeah, now I see a perfect place for that shield or that mana, whatever it was called, mana ward or whatever. But from the mat, from the melee, I don't see it. You know, there was a, three options I looked at: the vampire bat, Oshanus. Oh, you've already got phase. Demon shark was another one I, I liked. Yeah, this card would be crazy with it, but that's a wild look. Flight, dodge, 
six speed. Yeah, that's I mean, that's exactly what you would want. Yeah, I mean. Archery is probably not the most interesting consideration there. Yeah, I mean, you could throw a Naga Assassin in the front spot, get yourself seven speed with a backfire, throw a phase on it, and it's probably like a decent. But I mean, you know, is that an everyday situation? That feels pretty niche. Everything I, exa every example I gave feels, you know, pretty niche, except for maybe the Demon Shark. And I feel like if you were, if you're going Demon Shark with the water team, I don't know that I'm, I'm probably not wanting to spend seven mana on this pro on this legend card. I'm really not feeling it. Like as I look at the options available, of course it's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it is by no means, um, like an obvious overpowered option. I'm not seeing it. And now we looked at every none. Yeah, I mean, Noah the Just would like that with the dodge and the six speed, the backfire. Cambio. Oh, Cambio's already got phase. So, I mean, I think I listed five or eight cards that would really enjoy that phase and, and maybe work effectively, but they were primarily from a lower mana play. And so it feels pretty niche. And then I, I and for seven mana, and again, you're only doing two damage. I don't, I'm not sure I get it. And sure, the scavenge is going to go crazy. You're going to get, you if you put this in the second spot and you effectively protect it with a solid tank that's going to dodge a fair bit, you know, you can expect 12 to 15 hit points by the time it goes to the first spot, from second to first. And if you can theoretically bury this in like the fourth, fifth spot, this thing could have 20 hit points by the time it gets to the front. But it's only doing two damage. So what good is a meat shield? It's just not doing anything. It's like, yeah, the phase ward is cool. But I don't know. I really feel like Vampire was the one where I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. That would really, you know what I mean? Everyone's going to have it. And yeah, I mean, flight, dodge, five speed. In a rule set where everyone gets enraged, or I guess everybody else would speed up too. So interesting, but by no means, I'm, I'm not buying that. Like I know f I'm, I'm just not buying that. No way. And then, and then I would want to, one last note on that before we move on to the next card. I would say with respect to the Rune Arcanist, if, you know, depending on when this kit comes in, like does the phase ward come in at level one? That would make me way more interested in buying one copy. Is it, you know, does the scavenge come in at level four? Because this could be an interesting card to have if I didn't have to pay 250 bucks for it. If I had to pay 40 bucks for it to get the, the meat and potatoes that this thing would offer, I might be interested. But if I have to go to level eight to get scavenge and phase ward, which in my mind make it, you know, palatable, I'm a, I'm a no. The cripple and the weekend feel like superfluous additions. Um, they're not core to why I would want them. They're also not synergistic with a defense, uh, a phase ward defense, nor is like what I see here is synergy. Scavenge and phase ward is synergy. Scavenge is implementing, like making her more and more of a tank. Uh, phase ward is supporting your team from a de defensive perspective. So we have defensive buffs. Of course, cripple is a, you know, it's buffing you in a sense because it's eliminating your, your opponent's hit points. And there's synergy there with weaken, but it's not synergistic with the other two. If, if she's a defensive monster, I would like to see, you know, instead of weaken, instead of cripple, you know, I would have probably liked to see one more damage base and one more speed base. Um, and instead of those abilities, something that synergizes with scavenge and phase like triage, but maybe we have too much triage on those teams. How about cleanse maybe we have too much cleanse how about rear guard cleanse we saw that once and, and maybe we want to keep it to just that one time for now but i i you know there and it was on the it was on the blue team that had that 
but a rear rear guard cleanse is a powerful ability and that would be a real buff to this and it would be more synergistic with with like supporting the team and keeping it alive than cripple or weaken or so that's a big no for me what about you rick launimon rick launimon rick launimon i'm gonna check the comments and see if you guys had anything to say about that nope nothing let's keep going Rick Launimon. When legend when Legions of Chaos invaded the Splinterlands, the ranged Rick Launimon joined the crew of the Jewel of Liveria and sailed the Praetorian sailed on Praetoria to stop them. The Jewel was just one ship among them, among the many splinters across the world, a massive armada united in defense of their home. They lost badly. And Rick Rick Launimon was one of the few survivors. He returned to as a hero, although he didn't feel like one, the late King Wilhelm offered him a, vic, a vice royalty of a sire, of a shire, and said he returned to Praetoria with a contingent of elite rangers, where they carried out ambushes, sabotages, raids, and hit and runs. Uh, that's cool. I like this piece about he returned with a contingent of elite rangers because one, he's a ranger. Two, uh, he has this this ability kindred will which is very it like works with a team and so the idea to me like rings true like lore lore wise he is like a leader of man he supports his team he makes them better kindred will we'll talk more about that in a minute but i want to cycle back actually for just a second on rune carcanus because the lore was on point here um something it said about she she she's a particular enemy of rage rage is that magic monster dragon and so she uses her magic to protect her allies. That's what phase ward is. And so the, the imagery is on point, the, the lore is on point with the abilities. And so I like the card design. I just don't like some of those abilities, but with Rick Launamon, same deal. This kindred will makes perfect sense with, in conjunction with the story that's being told and with the visual imagery of who we're seeing. So let's look at these abilities. So 11 mana, quite expensive, but not the end of the world, maybe. Earth and life. Four archery, two melee. I think that's maybe like what I said he would have. And four speed. Two armor, seven hit points. Pretty vulnerable for 11 mana. I guess you could slap it in the six spot. But nowadays, piercing is pretty common, as well as rust, as well as, you know, damage that would eat this guy alive. So I'm not I'm 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 sensing weakness, but let's see. Like this is obviously nice, um, and I can see that his melee will be charge melee, which is nice because you can put him in the rear and he'll be contributing in two ways. Um, okay. Or archery with the earth team, you could bring close range with Fernhart. With the life team, you could bring Sloan for the archery buff. Synergistic with respect to the summoners available. Hmm. Could also play play him with um, Risk Rail Draft, get an archery buff. I don't like him with um, the life legendary. I just don't see why you'd want to put <clears throat> armor strike on him or repair even. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> so I don't fully understand this one. We'll look at that later. Charge with two damage, not the biggest deal. This unit may use melee attacks from any position with, and will target the enemy unit in the first position. Great. He's got two attacks, but it's only two damage. I'm not particularly concerned about that, you know, being done or reaching. And, I, you know, with that sword, I'm saying two damage doesn't ring true to me. <laughs> the sword looks like it weighs 50 pounds. It looks like Gatsu from uh, Berserk. Looks like like a two hand massive sword. You know, looks to me like a visual depiction of a four. Um, and I would argue four four. I'm starting to get pretty excited. Now that's just the first ability. That's just the first synergy. Let's keep going. 
Um, I do think that's underwhelming, the charge with the two. Let's go. Expose, 80%. Yeah, this is that, that, that ability that I've really disrespected up until the last few weeks. 80% chance to remove force field, lookout, reflection shield, shield void, void armor, immunity. Immunity removal is crazy. After a successful attack, expose will always remove immunity first. This is a very powerful ability, Jangles. You're right, you're right, you're right. You told me, you told me, you told me. Enough, enough, enough of you, Jangles. Um, he's been, he's been riding my, riding my, <laughs> riding me about this one. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's powerful. That's a big deal, especially because it's a double strike monster, right? Cause it has two damage outputs and it's not likely, it's not slow. So it's not likely to miss probably, probably asterisks. Um, and so it's, you know, maybe it's going to be pulling away two abilities per round. You know, you get rid of the immunity, then you get rid of a shield. You're transforming your opponent's team on turn one. Like that's a crazy. And and in those ways, that makes that damage really powerful. So that is a huge, huge, huge ability. And it synergizes really well as well with like the lore. Cause we're picturing this like freedom fighter who's been through it, who who has these tips and tricks. He understands like how to undermine and to um, to to stay alive and to fight to win. And and even though he was defeated, he wasn't killed. And he leads this group of people. And it's like I'm gonna expose your vulnerabilities. I'm gonna remove your benefits and turn them against you. That really fits thematically with who I'm seeing they created. And uh, and even though the two melee is minor. The fact that it can throw from that from what any position means that the expose is proccing, which means that even though it might be a meleeed one damage, you that expose is way more important. Do you see? So it's like yes, if they have a shield, I'm doing one damage. If they have a demoralize, I'm doing one damage. That's quite likely. One of those is quite likely, and yet I'm happy to see the expose happen. In many many cases, that's huge, because every time this guy attacks to the first position. You're, who are you shooting at? You're shooting at a primary tank or an off tank. And what, and how do they stay alive? They stay alive through one of these things, force field, lookout, reflection shield, immunity, void, void armor, right? These are the things that keep the opponent tank alive. Twice exposed is a big deal. This is like the, so far the shining jewel and who this guy is. And it works so perfectly synergistically with the charge, with the damage, with the lore. So far, so good. And stun, stun's awesome. You stun is awesome. Stun changes games. Now, immunity often resists stun, but he'll peel immunity. So I wonder if you've got immunity and I peel immunity because it says immunity always comes first. Expose will always remove immunity first. So if I hit you and I remove immunity in one strike, can I also stun you? I don't know if that's true or not or possible or not, but that would obviously make it even more powerful. Stun is a gigantic. And with two strikes and a 50% chance per on stun, that's a really high likelihood of stun. Like that's really cool, actually. And so, so far so good. I'm really, I'm kind of getting excited about this one a little bit. And I don't fully understand what this is. So let's learn about that. Kindred will. At the start of the battle, adjacent units with kindred spirit gain ambush. Okay. And then we go palace, right? So it's just them for now, but there'll be more. And he's a neutral monster, which means you could play him with either earth or life. That's a good, that's important because if this was the only synergy available and it was only available, let's say with green, then green's not available. Well, you lose that option, but these two are going to play together frequently. You don't want this guy in the first because he's giant killable with 11 mana, but you are happy to have him in the, in the third behind the palace and the palace too, by the way, ha, I, I played it earlier has lookout and the lookout um, can help your taunt, which I like doing a lot. I often will use my taunt and I'll use a lookout. And then now I'm going to want to use Rick Launamon in the third spot because of the fullness of the kit. And so 
he, Rick Launamon is giving a true strike to Palace. Is that what it said? Gains ambush. Dude, that's that's serious. Okay. Because Palace has been a bit underwhelming. Palace is a bit underwhelming um, for an epic. And so that's a sizable upgrade. And I love how it's synergistic. It's actually interesting because recently G People's Guild had that idea where let us know some ideas on new gladiators. Like after the gladiators retire, we'll create domineers. These domineer cards will have some sort of synergistic, whereas the gladiators had bloodlust where they're individualistic and that card will get really overpowered if it, and it may help you win by itself. Catralba, prime example. But the domineers had this domineer ability. It's all theoretical fan, fan fiction stuff. But the idea was that your, your domineer would support the team. Not not himself run away with it, not run away with the ball, but rather support the team. And that's what this kindred spirit stuff is all about. The palace supports the Rick Lanamon, the Rick Lanamon supports the palace. Um, so an ambush on a five bomb, pretty solid, right? You, that This card is a lot better. And so then you end up saying Rick Lanamon is better because you can play a five, like so essentially Rick Lanamon, if you have palace, allows five extra damage to happen in round zero that wouldn't otherwise happen and so you know that's really meaningful and there's a re there's a reverse benefit too which i'm which i need to look up i think he might get true strike if i if i recall correctly so kind of long story short i'm loving that card i'm gonna quickly open up palace from my card selection because I'm not seeing the update on Peak Monsters. It's a Rebellion core card. It's a neutral. There he is. So look, it's got Kindred Spirit True Strike. So at the start of the battle, adjacent units with Kindred will gain True Strike. Kindred spirit will gain true strike i gotta look at these the wording on this i love this kind of stuff this is so collectible card game to me this is so like i love this kind of stuff because you start getting these like thoughtful there's layers upon layers and layers upon t the best optimization of your team creation so kindred will kindred spirit Kindred Spirit offers your neighbor True Strike. Kindred Will offers your your neighbor Ambush. Dude, and by the way, this is the sort of ability, Some I've talked about this before, but some abilities get better and better and better. This ability gets better and better and better. So does, so does this. Expose gets better and better and better. So does Kindred Will. Why? Because... Expose is a 80% reduction of of important effects. Okay, hang on a second. Maybe maybe I'm wrong about this. I'm seeing now that the wording is such where it removes 80% 80, 80 chance to remove force field, lookout, reflection shield, shield, void, void armor, or immunity. It doesn't say any defensive ability. So I was going to say it can remove any defensive ability. So as defensive abilities grow in number, it will grow in power. No, it's because the wording is clear. It will remove those which is awesome in and of itself. But Kindred Will does get better across time. Why? Kindred Will partners with those who have Kindred Spirit. As we see more and more monsters with Kindred Spirit, Rick Launamon gets better and better and better, more people to partner with. Right now, Palace is the only, and it's a neutral, so it can fit into every situation and circumstance as long as neutrals are available. But what about in, that's, that's one monster in front of him. Palace is probably gonna be in the second position, getting an ambush attack because of Rick Launamon. But what about the fourth spot? What about another ambush from that place because Rick Launamon is inspiring both of them to have a uh, an ambush attack and so you you would have maybe you would have Coral Lurker in the first spot you'd have Palace in the second you have Rick Launamon in the third you'd have Monster X in the fourth and that Monster X with a range attack or an opportunity attack or a sneak attack or a sniper or a magic or right they could 
and would have an ambush as long as they had kindred spirit. And so this card will grow in strength. You can't say the same thing about this. Now, we, phase ward, yes, will get better if there's faster and faster monsters that have dodge, flight, you know, blind. But I not, this is like so much better. This card is so much better on every level. Um, I know it's legendary versus rare. And I, 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 I hate to sound critical. I just, this is, I'm, I'm a pass on the Rune Arcanist. Almost, the only exception would be if some of these key pieces come together at like a lower level, like a two or three or four, and I can just buy like 25 BCX, then I'm maybe into it. This card looks like a must have. And so we're at back, we're at 50,000 DC per. Let's do that quick. 50,000 times 11 times 0 0.0008, 440 US dollars. Ay, ay, ay. Guys, what do I do? I mean, to me, it looks like a must have. Rick Launemann looks like a must have, and I, I feel pretty strongly about that. I think I may have to try and figure it out. That's how I think about it. That's what I think about those cards. I think this card is at least, like I want to say a 9 out of 10. Maybe an 8.5 out of 10. The only vulnerabilities or limitations or challenges are, of course the man is high, but there's so many situations where that will work anyways. Now the whole fullness of what it could do is probably like that 60 mana plus because I talked about Palace being nine or 10, and then you're gonna put like a, a, a tank in front of there, like a Coral Lurker maybe. And so now you're up to 30, 40, 30, 35 mana already. And that's not including your summoner. So the it will be niche to do its mana cost. And it will have greatest impact at the highest levels because the removal of, uh, the expose is greatly impactful when your opponent has high level abilities. And so it's gonna be more of a top tier must have, but I still think it's, yeah, I, I landed an 8.5. Whereas I, in comparison, I go Night Stalker was like a nine because the four mana made it so much more functional, made it fit into more scenarios and circumstances and it wins substantially. I think this card will win a lot. I think it'll be very powerful. I think it'll really work at the highest levels. I think Runar Canis, either I'm missing something or it's a bit of a dud. Thanks for the comment, Nathan. Okay, guys. Two hours and my throat's starting to hurt. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Thanks for the great conversation. Uh, gathering, Nathan, Paul, Eli. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you for supporting the channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. I hope you enjoy these every single week now moving forward. I will see you again next week. Same, same bat time, same bat channel. And... Um, and yeah, have a great day, guys. Bye for now.